Welcome back to Faith and Flower and welcome to our laundry room. <laughs> this is Robin and in today's video I am just trying to get it all done. I'm starting off here in the laundry room because this area needs to be put back in order and I need to get some decluttering done. I have a list of things that I want to accomplish today and I don't have all day to spend in the laundry room so I'm just going to hit the main things that need to be done in here. I have laundry that needs to be put away, countertops that need to be cleared, and some cabinets that need to be reorganized. I was reorganizing our pantry and brought some items like these paper bags and plastic bags, which I've decided to store here in the laundry room, so I wanna make room for those. I bought some containers from Ikea for the upper cabinets, and then I've got the water jugs on the counter that we were saving water in for the ice storms. We're going to keep those, but I'm going to relocate them elsewhere and then I've decided to just tackle the lower cabinets today. I've got one under the sink and also a corner cabinet which is also like a black hole <laughs> that needs to really be reorganized and restructured. So that's what I plan to do today. Starting with the easiest thing, I'm going to gather up all of the things that need to be folded that have been drying here in the laundry room, get those things folded and put away, and then I can return to the laundry room and really get into things. I feel like sometimes we put off organizing and space like the laundry room because we don't have enough time to tackle the whole thing at once. So my idea today was to just take a section. So I'm going to start with the countertops and then I'm going to do the lower cabinets and I'm not gonna worry about the upper cabinets today because I know I just don't have time to do it all. The one upper cabinet that I'm not going to need to worry about is this one where I store our paper products. It's in pretty good working order. We use things, we restock it, and that's pretty much all it's for, so it stays pretty neat. But the under the sink cabinet really could use a lot of help. There are a lot of products under here. A lot of them I don't use very often, but we need to keep them on hand, so I need to reorganize those. There are some back stock items, and this whole area could just use a good cleaning as well. So I'm going to take everything out, clean it, and then reorganize things in a way that makes a little bit more sense so that I'll know where things are. They're gonna be grouped a little bit better. And I'm also gonna get rid of anything that we really don't use. After vacuuming, I'm just going to wipe everything down with a damp microfiber cloth from eCloth just to get up any little spills or anything like that. And then to protect the bottom of the cabinet, I'm going to just spread out this roll of shelf paper. This was left by the previous owners of our home and I never used it because I knew there wasn't quite enough to cover the entire space, but there is enough to help if there were a spill and protect the bottom of the cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and make use of it. This space under the sink had just become a place where I put anything that I didn't really know where else to put. And things were not in any particular order, which made it hard for me to know what was under there or to find what I needed when I was looking for it. So I'm trying to group things a little bit better. In that back corner, I've got all of the products that I use for taking care of our natural stone countertops. And then I am grouping together all of the sort of back stock containers of disinfecting wipes and toilet cleaner, things like that, so that when I run out, I'll know where to find them. And I'm also trying to make use of vertical space when possible. This basket contains extra paper and plastic bags. I used to keep it in the pantry, but I don't need to access them very often. This corner seems like a good spot for it. I can still access it, and it also leaves enough space for me to store our bleach under here as well. I don't use this cleaning caddy as much as I used to because I'm using less products when I clean the bathroom and other areas of our home. But I'm going to keep it and use it in place of buying a new basket to corral some of the things that I want to keep on hand here under the sink. 
For smaller cleaning items and tools, I'm grabbing a couple of mason jars to organize them a little bit better and keep them corralled so they're not just rolling all over the place inside of this caddy. I have some toothbrushes that I like to use for cleaning, some pumice stones, even a little flathead screwdriver for tightening toilet seats. It's nice to have those things on hand when you need them. Besides the products, I keep a garbage can and a cleaning bucket under here. I always keep the bucket positioned under the pipe in case there were a leak, and I have always kept things in there, some extra cleaning gloves and some things for washing windows, but every time I need a bucket, I found I needed to empty it. So I decided to take those things out and relocate them. I don't use them very often, and just put what I really need under here. I sort of weeded out the products that I know we don't use very often at all, but I want to keep them on hand because we do occasionally use them, maybe once or twice a year. So I'm going to corral all of those things in this other basket, and that's going to go down in the other cabinet. Items that we use for seasonal cleaning outside and some extra gloves, those are the type of things that I'm keeping in here. Before I store it away in this cabinet, I need to empty this out to give it a good cleaning and then reassess how I'm going to store the items that are already in here. This big bag of polyfill or whatever you call it for stuffing pillows is something that I never use and probably won't. And I pushed it back in that corner and it needs to be donated to somebody who could use it. But most of the other items are things that I do use periodically, like this accessory for our dryer, and that's a good place to store it, so that'll probably go back. And then I have other items that I don't use that often. I've got some back stock of laundry detergent, and then I have all the things for taking care of our house plants under here. Somehow I've amassed a small collection of stakes for orchids. I don't need all of these. I'll keep a few, but the rest are gonna go. Once it was empty, I vacuumed and wiped it down just like I did underneath the sink to get it ready for organizing everything under here once again. I grouped some things together that are for emergency preparedness. We made a kit like this when my son was in Boy Scouts and I've always kept it on hand. So we've got some matches and some extra candles, some plastic cups, a flashlight. We have um, a little first aid kit in here that's all ready to go. We also have a radio. This is really nice to have if we ever lost power and we just needed to get some information. I also have extra batteries in there. We've got a can opener because you definitely wanna have one of those on hand. A couple extra are always great to have. And then I have um, some like fire starter uh, gel that we use actually for our fondue set, but that would be a great way to boil water or heat up food if we lost power and propane. In the other basket, I have distilled water. I use that a lot for cleaning. And then tucked behind those two baskets are the other basket with the seldom used items. And having these things in baskets will make it easy for me to access whatever's back in that black hole of a corner. There's still plenty of space for the dryer accessories, so I tuck those in there as well. And then on the top shelf, way in the back, I just put those extra IKEA containers. I'm going to be using those really soon, but for now, that's a great place to keep them out of the way. I have some laundry items grouped together on this shelf and all of the things that I use for taking care of our house plants. The last item to go in is the vinegar that I use for cleaning. I buy it in a really big jug that doesn't fit under the shelf very well, so it'll go right out front and will be easy for me to grab when I need it. Next, the water jugs are out of here. They are so heavy and they take up way too much room on my countertop. 
Before I call it quits in here, I want to wipe down the counters really good. Our laundry room gets so dusty from all of the dryer lint. So I'm just gonna take a minute to do this and I will really feel like I've accomplished a lot in here today. like the idea of just taking some bite-sized chunks out of this room as far as organizing goes. I didn't get to everything. It's not clean from top to bottom, but I made some real progress here. And now I am motivated to get back in here the next time I have a little chunk of time and take care of the rest. And it made it so nice the next day when I needed to get things up and running here in the laundry room again. You know what laundry is like, it's never done, but it sure does feel good to do it in a space that is organized and clean. laundry well underway, I wanted to gather up all of the things that I've been collecting since I've been decluttering lately. I like to put all of our donated items in this corner of our closet and it was packed. So I'm going to unpack this corner and then make a trip to the donation center and say goodbye to all of this. There are so many random things over here in this corner and that's because as I come across something when I'm decluttering that's still in good working order but that we're not going to use anymore, I put it here and when I have enough, I gather it all together, pack it up and take it away. great to have this space all cleared out again. I'm going to keep this bucket back in the corner for future donations. We usually use this for an ice bucket, for entertaining. It's great for putting soft drinks in there, but it's not getting a lot of action in that department right now, so it's going to serve another purpose. I'm going to take these straight out to my car, and before I pick up Peyton from his work program, I'm going to drop these off at the donation center. 
After picking up Peyton and running a few errands, it was time for me to fix dinner, and I wanted to throw together something pretty quick, and I had a plan. So I grabbed some barbecue sauce and some carrots from the refrigerator, and then I headed over to the pantry to grab more barbecue sauce and some potatoes. You might remember a few videos back when I made a big batch of meatballs for the freezer and I'm going to pull those out tonight and make barbecue meatballs from the Pioneer Woman recipe book. This one is even easier than the others because I zeroed in on this part of the instructions that said I could just use bottled barbecue sauce without any doctoring to make this come together fast. So I just dumped the meatballs into the pan frozen and added the barbecue sauce. I used up the first container that was in the refrigerator and added the other one from the pantry. And all I had to do was warm this up. And honestly, the hardest part of this recipe was getting the barbecue sauce out of the jar. I just made sure that the meatballs were covered really well in the sauce and then I covered it and let it simmer while I was working on the sides for this dinner. From the same cookbook, I'm making stovetop mashed potatoes, and I'll have both of the recipes for the meatballs and for the mashed potatoes linked down below in the description box. In the recipe, she gives you the option of peeling the potatoes or not. My family doesn't mind the peels, and I figure it's a little bit extra nutrients, but it's also a little less work. And because I have a couple of carrots that I need to use, I'm going to make some basic braised carrots. And I don't have a recipe for this, but I will talk you through what I do. It's super easy. Austin loves carrots and he's usually sitting right next to me when I'm cutting them up. So when I dropped one on the floor, he was more than happy to take care of it. For the carrots, I just put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan and then I use some of this Better Than Bouillon beef base. And it's basically just a concentrated stock. And I like having this because it's shelf stable until you open it and then you keep it in the refrigerator. But it gives a ton of flavor to this and it just couldn't be easier. And then I add some dried parsley. And basically I just bring this to a boil and cover it. And then once the carrots are tender, I uncover it and let it simmer enough for the sauce to sort of thicken up a little bit and reduce. And that is it, they're done. While the meatballs and the carrots were simmering, I could fix the potatoes. Basically, once the potatoes were tender, I added to the hot pot some butter and some cream cheese and a little milk. The recipe actually calls for heavy cream, but I figure with all of this butter and cream cheese, that wasn't really necessary. Once those things were melted, I put in the potatoes and then used my potato masher to break up the potatoes and mix everything together. Because my family likes their potatoes to be a little bit on the chunky side and with the peel, it makes this come together a lot faster too. The 
this dinner was really good and I actually knew that it was a surefire winner for Peyton because he loves meatballs and covers everything in barbecue sauce. It was good and it's something that I'm gonna keep in mind for a quick dinner in the future and I'm gonna make sure to keep my freezer stocked with those meatballs. Of course, after dinner, it was time for cleanup. So if you need some dishwashing and kitchen cleaning motivation, I've got you covered. Another great thing about tonight's meal is that there was enough left over for us all three to enjoy it for lunch the next day. That's always a huge win for me. I hope that today's video gave you some motivation and inspiration for getting it all done in your home this week. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. If you're new here, I want to invite you to subscribe. We would love to have you join our Faith and Flower community. It's free, and if you activate the bell icon, you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video so you don't miss out on anything. I really appreciate you spending your time with me here today. I look forward to talking with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.